you guys, welcome back to Protective Film Solutions. Got an exciting video in store for you guys today. It's been a while. We've had the last couple of videos out since Long Tail Rally. You can see in the last video, the Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport that was completed for our good friend Hyper NFT. And now today we've got the PFS Project C8 GT4R. We're gonna get more in depth. It's been about eight months with the cars now, guys. We wanna kind of show how the car has been used. Again, why we chose this platform, all the parts that went into this, and if it's available for the consumer to buy. Apex also came out with a brand new wheel that I'm excited to share with you guys. So let's go and get started with today's video and uh, show you guys the Project C8 GT4R. All right, so as mentioned, we've had the car for quite some time now. And one of the first questions we've been asked is working here at PFS, why do we choose the C8 as the platform? So answer is kind of simple on that one. When Ryan and I talked about it, he's had his fair share of McLarens and other exotic cars, but the C8 platform is still fairly new. So when this car came out, there was still a really high demand on it. The car does really well online. It is a complete transformation from the previous generation. So a lot of people have gauged new interests that would have never looked at Corvettes otherwise. So with the C8, I really thought we could capitalize on the new body style do all new parts that no one else has done on the car. And also it's a little bit more cost effective. So right now with the market, market's still high, exotic cars are still at a premium. So I thought this seat would be a perfect build and uh, so far has not let us down. So we're gonna go into next of uh, what parts we did to the car and why. So if you guys remember, we bought this car and it was the factory rapid blue. Not my first choice, it is a favorite color for a lot of C8 owners, but a little too bright for me. But I had a vision in mind of what I wanted to do with this platform. So what makes this car a GT4R? So we took two ideas. There is a all new Z06 GT3R, and that's where we get the inspiration for this livery and wrap that we did. The GT4 means that it's a standard body. So GT3 means wide body, the flares are extended on the race cars, GT4 standard body, bunch of other stuff that goes along with that, but that's really the main difference if you're determining between the two. So what makes this car different and a GT4R? So again, we had to give it a name, so that was kind of my clever way of coming up with something with it. Essentially, we wanted to make a car that looked like it was a race car, but for the street. So this car, at the end of the day, is still very, very stock when it comes down to maintenance and overall upkeep of the car. Visually, it looks, I think, as aggressive as it can get, but while retaining its functionality and making it useful for every situation we've needed it. So going to shows has been great. Going to the racetrack has been great. Going on rallies has been uh, amazing. And the car's got about 12,000 miles on it now. So we really have been putting it through its pace. So there's a lot of brands out there that make parts for the C8, but not a whole lot that I really like. And whenever you're doing a build, I really like to piece things together myself and kind of make it look like it's intended to be an original kit or a kit that the manufacturer or race team would provide. With this project, there's a lot of existing partners we worked with and also a few new ones as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do a walk around of the car and show you guys each of the parts and why we chose to use it on there. So first thing you're gonna see on the car is the aggressive front lip. Uh, this is Racing uh, Sports Concepts GT front carbon splitter. As you can see, this has got quite the abuse out of it. I made the mistake of not putting PPF on there and I should have, so we've got a replacement one coming in. But overall, the strength of this front lip is solid. It's really cool because it molds with the body and it gets rid of that traditional Corvette line, which I felt was necessary. So it extends off the car, making it look more aggressive, but also flows with it so it doesn't look like it's out of place. Next thing you're gonna see on the car are the Varus Engineering canards. So they do offer these in two uh, formats, which is just the top two, or you can do what we did, which is the four. That just adds a little bit more aggressiveness to the front end, and I think it still ties in well that this brand is a different product than this one, but it just gives more aggression and more of a menacing attack on the front end of the car. So let's go on and move our way around the car. So next thing on this car is gonna be the Racing Sport Concepts side skirts. This is again, all carbon fiber. And the thing I really like about this one is that this flows very, very well to the body line. So as you can see here, it's molded straight to the original rocker and it transitions really nicely with it. And same thing, this thing is solid on the car. And it's even got a cutout underneath for the jack point. So when William and the team at RSC put this together, they did a great job engineering it to make sure it was a uh, functioning piece as well. So I really love the way this ties in on the side of the car. We're gonna get back here to the, the business end of the car that I like to call it. Um, so with the rear end of the C8, it's really traditional looking. Uh, I think it really ties more into the C7 versus the front end, which looks more exotic. So first thing you're gonna notice on the back of the car is this massive APR GT500 wing. So this is a 
unit that is readily available for the top piece. It's all carbon fiber. But I'm casing the team, go ahead and engineer an extended uprights, which is more traditional to the CAR race car. So the a typical wing would be a little closer to the body, wanted to kind of graft off the back to even out the flow. This is a one-off unit that Casey made for me. Absolutely love the way they, they did this. Flows with the car great. So besides the wing, next thing is gonna be the lower rear section of the car. So this is where a lot of work was done, including a lot of custom work too. So first thing you're gonna notice on the rear end is gonna be that it has a super aggressive rear diffuser. This is a Varus Engineering diffuser, it's metal. This thing is solid, it's not going anywhere. When I first chose this diffuser, I thought it was gonna be a little weaker and a little less aggressive, but it works perfectly because I cleared out all the factory mesh on here and we also got the cutouts on the side. So this diffuser is perfect and it's been solid for the, the time we've had the car. So that worked out really well. Next area we're gonna have is the Paragon Performance stainless steel exhaust. As you can see, the mesh was taken out so you can see where it's kind of heated up and turned blue, kind of a rainbow in color. And we paired that with a, a custom center section exhaust tips. Uh, this was done from my friend, Zarek uh, Fabrication. And basically we had him recreate a center exit exhaust similar to what the race car is going to have because for some reason, nobody out there has come out with a kit that has a center section exhaust. I thought for sure it was gonna be the first thing that an aftermarket exhaust company would come out with, but still to this day, no one's done it. So really proud to have one of the first units out. It makes it super unique and more of a race car. I think that really can capture that look of the CAR. Car sounds great. We're gonna have to start it up and give you a few rubs as well, but we're gonna move our way over to the side on here. So you can see the side of this car is all cut out. Looks completely different because traditionally there should be a bumper that continues down and over where you have your dual exit exhaust on the side. So what I did was I purchased a factory GM rear bumper, uh, replaced it on here so I didn't have to cut up the original. Uh, we cut it out to flow with the body line on the side, which will match up to the side skirt. And then with this exposed, we've got the floating rear diffuser and exposed rear tire giving that illusion that the car is a wide body when of course we know it's not. This is something that was super tricky. It was a lot of fingers crossed on it and hoping that my math worked out well. And I think it paid off because it really does give that unique look of a race car with the open rear wheel. So that's the back end of the car. The car also has a set of Paragon Performance lowering springs. So you're not gonna be able to see it on it now, but it did rear, uh, lower the rear of the car, the front of the car about an inch and a half. And that's paired with their lowering collars uh, that we did as well as well as the wrenches. So everything's all lowered all the way around on the car. And then we did a nice alignment with there. But traditionally, I would do a set of coilovers on this car, but I wanted to retain the front lift. So if you're a seat owner out there and you wanna lower the car, but retain that front lift, which helps out so much, a good set of Paragon springs, collars, and uh, wrenches will do the trick on there. And we're gonna go to the inside of the car. One of the biggest things we wanna swap out was Eric at Carbontastic set us up with his new C8 steering wheel. So the way I spec this one out is black Alcantara on the side, dry carbon on the top and bottom here, as well as the dry carbon inserts. And we have the white 12 o'clock stripe, which matches nicely with the white stitch interior. And then additionally, we have the extended dry carbon paddles. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, hold on to, especially on track but it really gives it an OEM look with the rest of the interior so it doesn't look out of place. The last thing on the car is gonna be one of my favorite things. Apex Race Parts has set us up once again. Uh, this is their traditional EC7 wheel. Uh, this is the original line that's been out for about 10 years now, so it's a true motorsport wheel. And we have this paired with a set of Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Been running Michelins for about a decade as well. It's their go-to uh, tire of choice. So Apex wheels are a must on all my builds. You guys have seen it on Project Aston, Project R8, and now on the C8. I've loved the company for a long time now. They make a great lightweight wheel. It's very cost effective, and I just outright love the way the wheels look. So we're gonna get more to Apex because they just released a new wheel, and it's some big exciting news for a lot of enthusiasts, not just if you have a C8. If you're wondering what happened to the roof scoop, Sadly, that car is still in development right now. I know we've got a lot of DMs because people want it. There's a reason why it's so hard to get a roof scoop on this car. And again, we didn't want to just tape it on and call it a day. So that is still in production right now. We're hoping to still put this out. So lastly, with this car coming together was our wrap. So the products that of course we're gonna be using from PFS is we did a full printed wrap on this. This was originally designed by Skeppel. 
and paired with Brian, our in-house media guy. And essentially this car was blue and now it's got a nice printed gray to yellow gradient all the way through. And you've got your traditional Corvette logos grafting off the back. This is super unique to this car, which is why I really like the, the Z06 GT3 design. Never seen it before. So everyone's doing the fades right now. I figured let's do something a little bit different to make it more unique. And then after that, we have it overlaid with the black gloss metallic and satin white aluminum graphics on here. We changed out obviously the GT3 to GT4, but everything else, if you look at this car next to the factory Z06 GT3R, it is spot on identical. Really excited with the way that came out because that was a complete transformation. Seeing it without the wrap, it was still a little unsure of how it was gonna come out, but this wrap is amazing. I love it. There's no reason to change it out, so it's staying on the car. Overall, this is what makes this car a GT4R. All right, so next thing we're gonna talk about, guys, is uh, what we've been doing with the car. So since we have owned the car, it's got about 12,000 miles on it now. The nice thing about it is it is still a Chevy at the end of the day. So you do get the exotic look and feel, but for maintenance, it's a lot more cost effective. So another thing that is attracting a lot of exotic car owners to this platform is that your oil changes, your brake pads, all that stuff is a lot more cost effective than your traditional McLaren, Ferrari, Lamborghini. Nothing wrong with those brands, but obviously you pay a premium when it comes to the maintenance aspect on the car. So with this car having 12,000 miles on it now, it's gone through two oil changes. We did the brakes up front, the flush and the alignment. Other than that, it's been an absolute beast. This car essentially with just the exhaust it has on it, it's not really modified. You know, it sounds good, performs a little bit better because it breathes better. It's lowered, so it handles a little bit better. It's got the arrow, so on track it handles better. But that's it. At the end of the day, this car's got 100% of warranty on it. So you can go ahead and have fun with it on the street, have some fun on the track, and know that you're not going to break the bank and also be able to drive it home as a daily driver after. So far, this car has been on a long tail rally with Daniel, Logan, Ryan, and Alina. They put about 2,500 miles on the car, I believe, going through about four different states. They had an absolute blast on there. The car was basically you jump in, you go. So some of the exotic owners on that drive experienced some breakdowns and stuff, which is to be expected. And this C8 just, again, you jump in, you go, it's a great car. And so they had a lot of fun with that. Another reason why we built the car, of course, is we wanted to take it out on track. Last month, we went out to Laguna Seca up north with our friends at Apex Race Parts, where we did the development launch video for the wheels. And that's something that we kind of teased you guys with back then. And this car ran flawless at Laguna. I've ran a few cars there now, and this car was definitely the easiest car to drive with the DCT transmission, with all of the telemetry inside, the electronics, everything made this car so easy to drive. So I can see why it's such an appealing car for people to purchase even if you do have an exotic car, because now you can thrash in your C8 at the track. Besides that, the car's been to numerous shows, local rallies, it shows off very well. It's got a great presence online. No one's really replicated a similar build to us, nor the wrap. So it's been kind of cool to get tagged in so many posts, sometimes not just the country, but also all over the world, we get tags from uh, a lot of places and shops. So it's cool that this car does so well online for social media. So we'll get to the next part, which is, do we still enjoy this car? So we're not gonna lie to you and say that the car is perfect and the best car ever, but we'll tell you the truth and our honest feedback. So having this car for, again, I think about eight, nine months now, this car has performed flawlessly over and over again. And will we do it all over again? Absolutely. For price point, there's not a single car out there that's gonna be matching this price point, starting at 60,000. Obviously, most of these are getting in about 75 to 80, with some of the higher ends over 100. So we were lucky to get this car MSRP, and so this car is about a $85,000 MSRP right in the middle there. There's nothing on the market that's close to it. So that's a great starting point just from the get-go. Performance-wise, this car is zero to 60, performs just under three seconds. Again, price for value, there's nothing out there. Even my previous cars, the R8, the Aston, you cannot launch them, so it did not have as quick of a zero to 60 time. So from that aspect, car performs great. Looks-wise, you've got your exotic look, but you also have the track look as well. I think it's super unique. So I think looks department, I'm still in love with the way it's been set up since we've done this conversion about five or six months ago. One thing I would say the car is lacking is sound. It does sound good, but you don't have that exotic sound to it. It also redlines at about 6,500 RPM. So between those two things, it does really remind you that this is an American car. It is a C8, it's not an exotic car, but that's okay because that's what it's supposed to be. 
So I think two gripes for the car for me is definitely gonna be the sound I'm missing as well as the red line. But besides that, I mean, again, the, the overall function of this car just really delivers. So if you're looking for something that is not gonna break the bank, you gotta do a C8. It's definitely the best way to go. All right, so we've had the DMs, the calls, the emails uh, over the last few months since we've unveiled this car about how can I have a GT4R? So there's a few ways to go about this one. These parts are mostly available for the retail market. So if you feel comfortable enough to uh, piece them all together, take on the challenge in your garage or with a shop, by all means go for it. But there are a couple custom pieces on the car that you can't get on your own. So we're happy to get for you. So if you are looking at the conversion done, the nice thing is this could be a one and done shop for you. So with our partnerships and relationships with all the brands that we talked about earlier, we can actually get parts a bit quicker than some of the general public and we can piece together everything in-house. We've got Ralphie and our teardown team that actually do all these parts and conversions here in-house on the rack. Also, what we can do at the same time is we can get your wrap done, the car protected, everything as well. So this is a one and done application if you wanna do a full conversion. Prices on the, the kit is going to vary depending on everything that you're gonna be doing. Comment below, what do you think it costs to do a GT4R conversion for a C8? So transferring a base model C8 to this car, what the overall cost is. I think you'd be shocked with what this transformation costs overall. So again, it's a very budget friendly car because after all, it is a Corvette. All right guys, so that's what makes up our car. So second part of this video, I'm proud to be a part of the release for Apex's all new wheel line. So again, we partnered with Apex over the last five years and then before that, another five years for myself. So it's a great brand that I've been working with for a long time now for a few reasons. One, their wheels just look so good. And two, it's a lightweight and functional wheel. It's also cost effective. So Apex has been known uh, widely in the BMW community, then Mustang, Camaro, Corvette. They've broken into the Porsche market, VW, and then they're gonna be getting into exotics over some time as well. But the biggest launch that they did was just recently back at Laguna Seca. So you guys saw uh, in the past, I had to block out the wheels but I'm proud to finally announce that Apex has launched their Sprint Forge line wheel. Without further ado, we're gonna show you guys a really cool clip from Apex Race Parts showing their brand new wheel. So as you can see by that video, Apex's new VS 5RS wheel. Again, it is a stunning wheel to look at. It's an all new line from them. They had their SM10 wheel, their EC7, the Arc8, and now this platform. So they're gonna get a lot of traction. And if you've got a C8 and you want a wheel that is now OEM, they just launched their very first 20 inch wheel. So you can actually run an OEM spec in 1920. You can do 1919, 1819, 1818. They've got everything. So C8 owners, Stay tuned because they actually are gonna be running a discount program. We'll put a link in the description below. Their gang up program is gonna offer, I think $400 off the first group buy. So you don't wanna miss that. If you have any questions about running these Apex wheels in your seat, 
again, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to assist you guys with that. So again, very exciting stuff for Project C8 as well as the Apex team. Appreciate all your guys' support over there, Eddie, Ryan, Yo, and the whole team. Looking forward to another track day. But now you guys wanna hear this car. And so let's bring it outside, do a few revs, and give you a quick launch control as well. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit more with it, though. How about a launch control? Let's do it. Let's go out there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. Please see the link in the description. The brand new Apex Sprint Forge wheels are in. Take a look and you're gonna wanna get a set before they run out. Uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Before we leave, take a look at this last video from Apex at Laguna Seca. See you guys. Georgie. What do you want? Dirty old man, I'm proud of it. Look at that. Ain't that something? Would you say blondes have more fun? So we got Ralphie on the course over here. Who knows what he's doing? Way to go. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.